Robin Borgeli. I'd like to welcome you to Yoga at Gray's Lake. Today we'll be doing some poses that celebrate a number of the animals that you might find around Gray's Lake. So look for some spiders and some fish, some locust, which we're going to call cicada pose in honor of the summer, and uh, lots of downward facing dogs because you know people love to walk their dogs around the lake. I'm so glad you could join us today. It's a beautiful day here. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are. Thanks. Have a great day. Namaste. Um, I don't know. I know a few of you were here last week. I see a few familiar faces. Some of you are new. Maybe some of you are brand new to yoga. So welcome to Yoga in the Park. It's really, really a great day. A uh, little bit December-y in July, but that's all right. Will you take a comfortable seated position, please? Perhaps with your legs straight out. And ground through those sit bones and reach the spine up toward the sky. Let the, let the back of the neck be long. Let the shoulders move to the right and the left. And start to breathe in and out through your nose. That's going to help to warm the body. You're going to keep the, the air in, warm the body that way. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. And feel this straight, tall spine from the inside. Many of our poses today are designed to celebrate our location. So we have poses that are named after animals in our yoga tradition. And I tried to pick ones that you might find here at Gray's Lake. Not every single one of them, but many of them. So watch for that. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll come and join us. I'm going to take the right knee and bend it up towards the body. And some of us are going to step it across over to the left. Julie's going to be showing various versions of the poses, the poses I say it, and some modifications. Follow along as best and as easily as you can, doing what feels right to you. You're going to reach the opposite arm around and grab that leg. And we're going to take the, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to take that same arm up and reach off to the side. Stretch open that side body. Gorgeous. And then reach up and turn and let those fingertips come down behind you, on the mat behind you, and get into a little bit of a twist. Don't worry if you're going in the opposite direction of your neighbor this morning. Just twist and feel the spine begin to open up. Reach the back arm up and come back over, keeping the spine as long and straight as you can. Bring the arm down, please. And we're going to switch this up. So the leg that's bent is going to come straight toward me. The other leg is going to bend, and you can keep it right next to that knee or step it over. Wrap the opposite arm around that knee and lift the remaining arm up toward the sky. Take a stretch first off to the side. Reach and stretch the side body and then lift straight up. Let that arm drop back behind you and come into your twist. Being very gentle here, warming up the spine. Keep the breath turned on. And we're gonna lay, raise that arm back up, inhale and exhale, float it down. Beautiful, everybody. Half Lord of the Fishes pose. They're out there somewhere. These guys are all looking for them. I'd like to ask you to come on up to standing now. Come to the front edge of your mat. And take the hands right in front of the heart. We're going to warm up um, with a series of movements called the Compassion Sequence. 
going to talk you through it a couple of times, and then we'll see if we can do it without me talking, just like we did last week for those of you who were here. Different sequence, though. Hands right in front of the heart. I'd like you to take your two hands and turn them so the palms are facing toward you. And go ahead and gaze at those hands for just a moment. Put your interior self in one of those hands. The, hand, the self that you don't show everybody else. That self in one of those hands. And gaze at that self just a little bit. And put your exterior self, the side that you do show everybody else. And put that in the other hand and gaze at that hand just for a moment. And then with the kind of compassion that you can, you and you alone can show yourself and the world, we're going to take those hands and we're going to move them out and away into the, wor- into the world. And now turning the palms toward each other, go ahead and make a fist with the thumbs raised and draw the arms wide to the right and left. Take a big breath in and blow compassion toward one of your hands. Inhale the head back to center and blow compassion toward the other hand. Blow it right out of the mouth. Beautiful. Bring the head back to center. We're going to inhale those arms up. Exhale them all the way back behind you and interlace the hands. Raising the arms up to stretch the back of the shoulders, lift the eyes toward the sky. And then release that grasp, let the arms float up and bring the knees forward, coming into a chair pose, Utkatasana. Straighten the legs, bring the hands back to center, and breathe. We'll do all that again. Open the palms toward you, gazing first at one and then at the other. If you have someone or something in your life that's troubling you, maybe you want to put them in your hands. On an exhale, let those hands move away from you, out into the world. Turn the palms toward each other, make that fist with the thumb up, bring the arms out to the side. Inhale and blow compassion toward one of your hands. Inhale back to center, and blow compassion the other way. Bringing the head back, we'll raise the arms up. Drop the arms all the way down behind. Interlace. Lift those arms behind you. Raise the face toward the sky. Beautiful. And then release the hands. Arms come up. Knees come forward. Standing in your power, in your chair pose. Hands back to the heart. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm not going to say anything. If you don't remember, that's okay. Just do your best with it. Remember, Julie's up here too. Beautiful work, everybody. Go ahead and raise the arms up on an inhale, saluting the sun now. Exhale, flat back, forward fold. Very simple, basic sun salutes. We're going to step the right leg back in a lunge. Stretch that hip open. Front knee is right over the ankle. We want to be safe here, so don't let your knee come forward to the ankle, please. Step back with the left leg, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come forward into plank pose and hold. 
Now right here we've got lots of levels. Full plank looks like the top of a push-up. If that's not comfortable for you, you're going to drop to the knees and do plank on your knees. If that's not comfortable, come to hands and knees. That's just fine. If you're nursing an injury or if you're growing a baby, you want to be extra careful with this ab work, all right? Coming all the way down to the mat, take the hands back by the hips. Locust, today we're going to call it cicada pose, right? Because we're at the park and we want animals that are at the park. So hands back by the hips, lift up through the spine, take the crown of the head back. Soften down. Hands up underneath the shoulders. Squeeze the abs and lift to downward facing dog, tucking those toes, taking the hips up. Beautiful work. Remember, you can always come through all fours to downward facing dog. Step the left leg forward and lunge. Step the right leg forward and a lunge. Swan dive up with a flat back. Inhale, arms come up. Salute that sun. Let's bring it out here. Hands down to your heart. Inhale, right back up. Exhale, flat back, forward fold. Stretch those hamstrings by lifting up the sit bones behind you. Really open up the back of the legs. Left leg steps back in a lunge. Open that hip. Check in with the front knee. Knee is right over the ankle. Both feet back, downward facing dog. Coming forward into plank pose. We're going to warm it up here a little bit in case that breeze is getting you chilly. So only do what is comfortable for you. You're going to pick your right arm up and take it straight forward toward the leg. Reach toward that leg and set it down. Left arm up, le reaches for the leg. Set it down. Right arm to the side. Set it down. Left arm up. Set it down. Right arm reaches back and touches the thigh. Set it down. Left arm, touch the thigh. Let's do it again. Right arm forward and down. Left arm forward and down. Right arm to the side, down. Left arm to the side and down. Right arm back, touch the thigh and down. Left arm back, touch the thigh and down. One more. Right arm forward and down. Left arm forward and down. Right arm to the side, down. Left arm and down. Right touches the thigh and down. Left touches the thigh and down. Take a nice big breath in right here. And now soften down to the mat. Whew, good job everybody. Now you're warm, right? 60 degrees out here? Nah, feels more like 75. Let's come up in locust again. This time if your low back is feeling comfortable, you're going to add the legs. So you're going to lift the head, chest, and <clears throat> and shoulders off the mat, and you're also going to lift your legs out. Try to squeeze your ankles toward each other. Toenails facing the grass, heels facing the sky. And then soften down. Tuck it back to child's pose. Just a reminder that this is a place you can go if you get a little weary or you need a break or your back needs to curve the other direction. Child's pose or devotional, arms out front or arms out by the hit, by, back by the heels. Whichever one is most comfortable to you. I see some of the layers coming off. That means we're doing our work right. That's great, everybody. Come forward to all fours. I guess it's possible you could see a Halloween cat here at the lake. So go ahead and puff that spine up. And it's unlikely to see a cow, but you never know. Drop the belly, lift the eyes, lift the sit bones. This is Iowa after all, right? If nothing else, maybe the butter cow come by the lake. Arch your spine, drop your head, look back at those thighs. And once again, coming forward. Belly drops, head lifts, sit bones go up. 
Very nice, everybody. Coming back to a neutral spine, tuck the toes, walk the hands forward two inches. Find the weight in the first finger knuckle of each hand. Spread those hands like starfish. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Surely there's a dog here in the park today. Stretch the heels back toward the floor. Stretch the hips up in the sky. Push that mat or the grass or your blanket up over your head like you're going to push it right out from under you. And then we're going to step or walk forward. Hanging forward fold. Swan dive up with a nice flat back. Inhale as you reach up toward the sky, toward the clouds. Exhale, hands to your heart. Warm now? You ready to do some yoga? All right, let's inhale, arms come up. Exhale, nice flat back, forward fold. Starting out just like we did before, we're going to step the right leg back in a lunge. It's just so fun to look at you all. I'm sorry, I get silent every once in a while because I look out there and there you are. It's great. Let's step both feet back, please, downward facing dog. Now take that right knee and drop it forward. You're going to be turning off to this side over here. I'm going to walk over here. Right knee drops. Right knee. I'm going to walk this way. <laughs> okay, go ahead and lift to the side, looking out that way, please. So lift up, arms at T. Turn your left foot down on the mat. Lift all the way up, all the way up so your torso's straight. Sorry, my direction just failed you there. All the way up, come off that hand. Both arms at T. Lift all the way up, both arms at T. So you're kneeling. Up, all the way up, like prep for gait. Prep for gait, I'm sorry everybody. Prepping for gait pose. Got my wires a little crossed there. You got it now. All right, now we're there, right? <laughs> we're going to bring the, right, the uh, left arm down, right arm lifts. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now bringing this right arm all the way back to the grass where it was, flex that left foot and raise it up. It's a kneeling half moon. Nicely done, everybody. Left foot's going to come down. We're in mm -hmm. side plank. This is a modified side plank. So those of you who know side plank, who want to ramp this up a little bit, bring that bottom foot forward like you're walking a tightrope. Those who want to ramp it up a little bit more, push into the left foot, bring the right foot up, and bring it straight forward. Gorgeous, everybody. Let's bend that knee if it's up. Everybody's going down to our modified version. Nicely done. Let's soften the top hand down. We're coming back to our downward facing dog. Forward into plank pose. Soften all the way down. I'm going to stretch that quad that we were just using. So let's um, pull the right leg in, roll the right shoulder back. Left arm comes parallel to the front edge of your mat. Push into that arm and lift. A modified frog pose. I know there are frogs in the lake. That leg is back there. Squeeze the hamstring a little bit more if it's not quite touching the hand. It's back there. You've got to believe it. Very beautiful. 90% of success in yoga is believing it. Yes, my body is there, and it will do what I ask it to. I'm going to release that foot. Soften down. Remember, you can go through all fours, or you can tuck the tummy, 
and come up into your downward facing dog pose. Some of us are feeling pretty warm and we want to hop up those feet to the hands. Others of us are going to walk. Find your way back to your forward fold. Stretching the sit bones up. And then nice flat back, inhale, up you come. Exhale, hands to your heart. Notice how you feel right now. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, flat back forward. We've got to do that whole mess on the other side. We've got to do our second side, right? Step, hop, or walk back to downward facing dog. Sit bones moving up. And this time the left knee is coming down. We're going to have a lot less confusion. Yeah, we'll still probably have a little confusion, right? It's okay, it's yoga. We're going to drop that left knee, turn the right foot toward me, and come all the way up, arms at T. Padigasana gate pose. Lift the left arm up, right arm comes over. Stretch the side waist long. And then arms back to T. Taking the left foot down. Lift the right foot up. Flex that foot, please. Arm up. Modified half moon. Ardha Chandrasana. And then we're coming back to side plank. The right foot's going to be down. Again, if you want to challenge yourself, that left foot can come forward like you're walking a tightrope. Or you can bend the left knee and bring it straight out. Soften the knee back. Coming down onto hands and knees. Let's soften all the way back to devotional pose. Lifting up and lifting the hips to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. I'm going to take the right leg back into a one-legged downward facing dog. Hips facing the mat, shoulders facing the mat. Point out through those toes, you squeeze the glute to lift the leg. And then, those of you who know pigeon, that's where we're going, Kapotasana. So bring the knee right through to between the hands. Back leg is straight. Stretch the hips open. We're going to push into those hands and lift that leg all the way back to a one-legged downward facing dog. You can bend the raised knee, if you like, and drape that heel back toward the glute. If you're feeling really warmed up and you like to flip your dog, now's the time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't try. <laughs> Stay right here. And then go ahead, everybody's going to straighten that leg out behind and set it down on the mat. Walk it out a little bit. Bend one knee and then the other. Feeling so good here today by the lake. Warming up a little bit. I'm kind of grateful for these clouds, actually, because I think it's going to be beautiful and sunny later, just what we need. Breathe it in. Let's take the other leg up. I'm thinking it's the left leg, but you know better than I do. Take your other leg up. Point out through the toes. 
hips and shoulders facing the mat. Squeeze the glutes to lift the leg. Couple of toss in a pigeon pose. That knee is going to come right up and through between the hands. Foot comes over in front of the hip on the other side. Tuck the back toes and walk that back foot back further. Extend. Gorgeous. If you feel anything uncomfortable in the hip and you've got a sweatshirt, you can stick it right under that, that hip just for a moment, or a sneaker would do. In the studio, we'd give you a prop. Right out here, we've got to use what we've got. Pushing in the hands, we're lifting back to our one-legged downward facing dog. This time we're going to turn the hip open and bend the knee, get a quad stretch. Hold and breathe right here. And then if you want to go ahead and go over into the wild thing or flipping the dog, different places call it different things. You can go ahead and go. Just be kind to that low back, yeah? And you'll see some amazing yoga going on around you. If you haven't ever seen this pose, it's pretty cool. We're coming back over. Point out through the toes. Settle down in your downward facing dog. I'm going to come forward into plank. Soften all the way down to the belly. We got to do our half frog on the other side. So I'm thinking it's your right arm forward and your left foot that you need to bring in. But you know, if you pay attention to your body, which one for sure. So make sure you're doing the other side now. You look good, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful yoga this morning. I'm so proud of each and every one of you for getting out of bed this morning and coming on down to the river, the lake. I'm going to soften out of this pose and come back to child's pose, this time taking the hands up and interlacing them behind the sacrum. You're going to lift those hands and roll right up on top of the head, coming into rabbit pose. Just like Julie. Some, some studios call this yogi mudra. You might have heard it called that. We're calling it rabbit pose today for the obvious reasons. We know there are bunnies here in these woods. Really puff up through the spine. Don't put too much weight on the head. Don't take weight in the back of the neck. Let your body lift out of the pose. And then soften the hands down to the sacrum first and release into your full child's pose. Letting the hands come down on either side of the feet. How's that breathing going? Remember, in and out through the nose. If you're new to yoga, it takes a little getting used to to breathe in and out through the nose. We're coming forward to all fours. I'm going to do a shoulder stretch. I'm going to call it spider pose today because I know there are spiders here. I see a whole bunch of them out there. So making sure that the wrists are right underneath the shoulders, the knees are right underneath the hips to start with. You will get a little twisty in this pose, but that's okay. Start out in a good place and your pose will work for you. I'm going to take the right arm, flip the hand, and slide it behind the left wrist out to the side, bring the shoulder and the cheek down to the mat. Some of us are going to stay right here. Some of us are going to take this pose a little further. So if you're happy, you're going to stay. This feels good to you. If you'd like to uh, challenge yourself a little bit, make a spider with your left hand. A little spider. So you're coming up on your fingertips. And you're going to walk that left hand up above the crown of the head. And that's going to open you a little bit further into the twist. Push into that hand, those fingertips. If you want to take the pose a little further, 
you're going to slide the knee, the left knee, up toward the elbow, uh, excuse me, up toward the armpit. So you're going to get a little more compact, and that hand is going to walk a little further. And you're going to see a little more of the sky as you look up. Julie's got her leg out. So if you want to go a little further, take a peek at what she's doing. That arm that's on the mat, the opposite leg's going to walk out there and work its way out there. And you're going to come a little more into the twist. Again, only trying what feels right to you, please. Gorgeous. Don't be afraid to tuck and roll. You might meet the person on the mat next to you. That'd be okay. To come out of this pose, you've got to work out of it the same way you went into it. So bend the knee a little, bring the hand back a little, bend the knee a little more, bring the hand back a little more. Good. Beautiful. Straighten up, come back to all fours. Let's take puppy pose. So we're staying on the knees, the hips go high like downward facing dog, the arms stretch out in front of you. And then we're going to do that crazy spider to the other side. So coming up to all fours again. If you haven't figured it out by now, lefts and rights are hard for me. So I'm going to count on you to know which one hasn't been down yet. I'm thinking your right hand's straight, your left hand is sliding. I'm going to flip that hand, slide it down, take the shoulder down to the mat, shoulder and cheek. Some of us are going to stay right here, and that's going to feel good. Pushing into the right hand then, let that elbow move toward the sky, make a little spider. Walk that spider up over the top of your head. Right knee is going to come in toward the left armpit. And you're going to walk that spider a little further. Full pose. The shoulders are going to come all the way down to the mat, so that's where you're headed someday. Someday does not need to be today. Leg is going to come outstretched, so that top leg is going to move out toward the outstretched hand. Again, don't be afraid to tuck and roll. Very nice. Beautiful spiders. All right, to come out, we're going to go the same way we went in. So a little bit hand, a little bit leg, a little bit hand, so you get your balance back underneath you. And then you're coming to all fours. We're lifting to a full downward facing dog, or you can do puppy again if you like. Hips go up. And we're breathing. Some of us are going to walk up, hands to the feet toward the hands, and sit down. Some of us are going to hop up and into Sukhasana, easy pose. Hop up and sit down. Now we're going to take the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Let those hips open a little bit. We're going to come into a twist, so now I'd like you to actually separate the feet. It's more like an omega, if you know your Greek letters. Feet are maybe hmm, 8, 10, 12 inches apart. Knees are up a little bit. So for those of us who have wide open hips that want to go down, we're actually going to lift those knees. We're going to snake that left hand through and underneath. We're going to lift the right hand up in a twist. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Soften the top arm down, snake it underneath the leg, and take the opposite arm out, twist it up. Open to the sky and the lake and the birds. This wonderful, wonderful day that we're having together. Soften that arm down. 
I'm going to bring both arms underneath now. Walk those heels together and let the toes come up toward the sky. Arms are underneath. Hold forward, bring your shoulders down toward your knees, bend your elbows and lift those arms and then see if you can rock back and bloom that lotus. Again, don't be afraid if you tuck back and roll, you're not very far off the ground. Good, soften down. Beautiful, let's try that one more time. Sometimes the second time's the charm. I'm going to bring those arms underneath, lift up. Try to lengthen the spine now. Lengthen that spine. Take those shoulders up toward the sky. Gorgeous, and then rock back forward. Leave the hands where they are now. Let them face the, the floor, the ground. You might even get a handful of grass on the way. We're going to wa start walking the feet away from us mm -hmm. and the hands out. We're coming into Kormutasana, turtle pose. Keep walking your arms straight. Keep walking your legs away. Let your head come down toward your mat. Extend and open. Keep reaching the top of the head toward the lake. And breathe right here. Just like spider pose, getting out isn't hard, even though you feel a little trapped right here by your legs. You're just going to come out the same way you came in, a little bit at a time, backing up, backing up, bringing the arms out, sitting up tall. Let's come back to Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet are together. Go ahead and pull them in toward you now. Let those knees open toward the mat. Sit up nice and tall and breathe. You know, I should be able to hear you breathing. And if I can, at least your neighbor should. So take a big breath in, and on the exhale, try to make a little H sound in the back of your throat, but keep your mouth closed. If I can do it in a mic, you guys can all do it, so the person next to you can hear you. Apparently, the heron flew over, or maybe it was a crane, but I think it flew over a little early. But we're going to see if we can bring it right back now with crane, with heron pose. So classic heron pose, the bottom leg is going to be folded back with the heel outside of the hip. If that's not comfortable for you, you've got options. You can leave that leg folded right like it is right now in half a Baddha Konasana, or you can even just take it out and let it set right in front of you. So do something that feels comfortable to you. Your second leg is going to bend. Come up quite close. And you're going to work that same shoulder inside of the leg. So I'm doing left. You can do what you like. Same shoulder inside of the knee. The hand is going to come around and take the outside of the foot. So it's kind of a little snaky feeling and you're going to squeeze that knee back in. And then the opposite hand is going to come down and hold the inside of the foot. We're going to sit up tall here. Lift the foot right off the floor, ground, and then go ahead and see if you can straighten it up. If that foot feels like it's far away, you can walk the hands down on the leg and hold here. Now I want you to try to straighten up. So pull the spine in a little bit, lift the shoulders, take them to the right and the left, and breathe. And imagine that you're a soaring heron. We're going to take that opposite hand, the one that's on the inside of the foot, take it around and hold the outside of the leg, and twist open.
Reach that back arm back. And then soften the knee, turning back around. Try to keep that length in the spine as we go to the other side. So again, we've got options for the bottom leg, and if, since that leg's just been up in the air, you want to be sweet to it, right? To bring the other leg forward. Let the knee fall out to the side. Take the arm of the same leg, shoulder inside the knee, hand to the outside, the little toe side. Wrapping the other hand around the inside of the foot, let's lift that heel off the ground. And then go ahead and straighten. Now sit up nice and tall. Reach the top of the head. There's that sun. Grow like a plant up toward that sun. Take the shoulders to the right and left. Remember, you can hold the leg if that's more comfortable. You can even hold the knee. You can even do this with a bent knee. Lots of options. Doing what feels right to you this morning. We're going to change the grip. So the hand that's holding the inside of the foot is going to take the outside of the foot, take that opposite hand out, twisting open. Remember your breath. Feel how wide and open your arms are, your shoulders. Extend collarbones to the right and left. Soften back to center, let the knee bend. Let's bring both legs straight out now. Let those knees soften. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, fold forward. Paschimottanasana, intense stretch of the west. I want you to bring the top of your head toward the lake, toward me, toward the tops of your feet. Stretching the sit bones back behind you. And breathe. We're going to inhale the arms up, all the way up, and back, coming back behind you onto your elbows. So leaning back down behind you onto your elbows. Lift the heart up toward the sun. Lift through the heart. Drop your head back if it's comfortable for you. Legs are together. Toes are flexed or pointing out like you're stepping on the gas pedal of your car. Keep lifting that heart higher. Fish pose, modified fish pose, but a beautiful fish pose. Opening the heart to the sun that's now shining on us. Look at what you did, everybody. You brought that sun out. And then you're just going to release down to the mat, letting you, walking your elbows out to the right and left. Pull your knees up into your chest. And then lift the feet toward the sky with the knees bent and take the outsides of your feet. Happy baby pose. Some people call this dead bug pose. I guess we've got both here at the lake today, both happy babies and dead bugs. So you can choose. Stretching open. Being mindful of your neighbor, go ahead and release one of your legs into a straddle. Doesn't matter which one. Just let it go out to the side. Straighten the leg. Arm can come underneath and support the thigh, or you can reach with the hand on the toe or the leg, your choice. And then we're going to fold that leg in and reach the other leg wide in a straddle, half a straddle. Bring the legs back up overhead now, point out through the toes, hands down by the hips, and rock the toes toward the nose. Just very gently, lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering, release that low back.
Beautiful. Arms out to T with the palms face down. You've got a choice. You can leave those legs straight or you can bend the knees and we're going to drop the knees to the left side coming into a twist. Knees bent or legs straight, lowering down. Try to keep both shoulders on the earth. If you like, you can move your eyes to the right to get a little more twist. Gonna bring the eyes back center first and then roll the legs back center. Again, legs straight up or knees bent. Go ahead and soften down to the other side. Taking the twist. Eyes moving off in the opposite direction if you like. Keep lifting the top hip. Stretching your spine. And then the eyes come back first, and then the knees. Tuck your shoulder blades flat underneath you. Go ahead and drop your feet down. Keep the knees bent for a moment. Push into those feet and lift the sacrum right up off the floor and lengthen the spine as you set the sacrum back down. Vertebra by vertebra. Being nice and long from crown to tailbone. We're going to flip the palms and turn them up toward the sky, receiving all of this wonderful energy today. If you feel any discomfort in your low back, you can keep your knees bent. Otherwise, please extend your legs out and take up space right and left. It's a Shavasana pose. It's our relaxation pose. Your challenge here is to see how fully you can let go and let the earth support you. So take a couple of bigger, deeper breaths and let your body grow heavy. Release through the fingers, release through the feet. Make sure your glutes are released, your back body is softening down. We're going to slowly start to come back to our awareness. Shavasana is a challenging pose. Don't move quickly. Just take some deep breaths in and out through your nose. If you're feeling very grounded right now, you can stay with that. If you're feeling like you're kind of floating around, let that cloud soften and float you back down to join us on the earth. 
going to drop you off ever so gently, setting you down on your mat. And then wiggle your fingers and toes. I'm going to roll off to the right side, pulling the knees in. And tuck those knees up toward the nose, rounding out through the back body here, opening the spine, opening the space between the hips, opening the space between the shoulder blades. Letting the back of the throat be open, tucking the chin down, keep drawing those knees up. Using your hands to assist, we'll come to a comfortable seated position. Sit up nice and tall. I'm going to do one more thing together today before we close. It's called bumblebee breath. It's a, breath, a, breath that, a type of breathing that you can do uh, in your meditation. If you have a seated meditation practice, it helps to quiet the mind. But uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to have 250 bumblebees buzzing together. So. If you're wearing glasses, you may need to take them off because it requires you to close your eyes with your hands. You're going to make a hand kind of like this. Fold that first finger down. You're going to do this with both of your hands. Your <coughs> middle ring and little finger will come over your eyes. And that is just going to put your thumb just conveniently in place to close your ears. So you can either stick it right in the ear or take that little flap and push it in. We're going to do six breaths in and out. The first six, three, you're going to listen to your breath. So you'll breathe in and out. Remember that H sound I was talking about? You want to try to, and you'll hear that interior sound. The next three breaths, we're going to breathe in and hum on the way out. Mm. Okay, it's a little odd, right? But it, it's that's where the bumblebees come in. So if you if you let your inner and outer awareness work here, you'll feel like you're suddenly in a, in a whole busy hive. Okay, But at the same time, it's going to help to quiet the mind. It's going to take you into your Saturday in this beautiful, wonderful way with your body and your mind all together. So let's give this a try. Again, if you're wearing glasses, you may want to take them off. Breathing in and out for six breaths. Three breaths quiet and listen. And then three breaths humming on the exhale. Mm. that one more time. Three breaths quiet, listening. Nice, long, easy breaths. And three breaths humming on the exhale. When you're all done, lower your hands to your lap. Sit up tall. Keep the eyes closed if you're comfortable. And we'll bring the hands right up in front of the heart. Bow your head and salute the magnificent being that you are. 
the light that burns within you, may it burn long and strong and bright. I'm going to lift up the head and open the eyes. Take those arms up, inhale. Exhale, reach the hands wide to the right and left and all the way down. Inhale up. Pull that good energy of this beautiful day right into your heart. And then take what you have to offer this Saturday morning. Inhale. Exhale, sprinkle it out around you. I'm told there are a few announcements, but before we hear what they are, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming out. Namaste.